On December 12, 2022, Project Playtime introduced a very interesting addition to the lore of the Poppy Playtime series. That being an initiative started by a crazed doctor to make giant toys to act as workers that wouldn't need any pay nor respect. All to make sure Playtime Co. stays afloat amid many issues, including falling profits, secrets about the company getting out, and more staff leaving than getting hired. And I go more in depth in the video on screen here. Which you can view both at the end of this video, and of course the card in the top right corner right now. Since that video, multiple VHS tape uploads as well as Phase 2 of Project Playtime has come out. So let's catch up on what's going on in the Poppy universe by diving deep into... The first tape we got access to is of an incident named Disappearance by the company. As at 10.27pm, Experiment 1170, Huggy Wuggy, had escaped from the facility through a delivery bay door, which was quickly spotted and the whole facility soon knew that one of the experiments had escaped. 1170 ran a half a mile in three minutes. All security vehicles and personnel were sent out to tranquilize and subdue 1170 and bring them back to the factory. Personnel quickly surrounded 1170 at a railroad crossing, though 1170 quickly retaliated. In the commotion, 1170 is hit in the leg with a tranquilizer dart as it runs to a neighboring force, where security is sent in on foot. The search area for 1170 is extended to over 4 square miles. Multiple casualties occurred, 5 confirmed dead, 6 missing. 1170 is found at a nearby residence. He's quickly sedated and relocated to the factory. After 117 is returned to its rightful place, a note is sent to security, stating, How 117 was able to access the ventilation system without security's realization is beyond me. It is only blind luck that we found him before someone else did, and it cost us lives. The innovation department is not happy. I am not happy. Leif Pierre, Playtime Co. Head of Innovation. End of incident. The first tape in the series has a couple interesting things to note that adds to our understanding of the specific bigger body featured, as well as the lengths Playtime Co. will go through to keep these experiments under lockdown. Huggy Wuggy's main goal in this incident was seemingly just to get to this building and stop. The implication here is that whoever was used to create this bigger body has some connections to this house. There are four ways to interpret Huggy remembering this location. 1. The human that was used to create this bigger body was a worker at Playtime Co. who remembers it as their house. 2. Within Huggy, there is an orphan who was used to create him. And this house is his old home before he was orphaned and now he wants to go back, but never can. 3. Similar to the last idea, inside Huggy is an orphan, however, this house is actually a previous orphanage that Playtime Co. gracefully took the orphans from as the play care was completed. Though after the experimentation and being put into Huggy, the sad orphan wants to go back to a better place where they remembered a better time. Though there is also a darker fourth option, that being that this house was the child's original home, but he wasn't an orphan. He was taken by Playtime Co. to experiment on and was turned to Huggy to get the best results. Do I think the last option is the one that Modern Entertainment is going for? No, but option 2 or 3 is probably the most likely option. The monsters are able to be tranquilized. This implies quite a bit about the anatomy of the experiments. As we already knew that even the smaller toys were able to bleed, however, now that we know they can be tranquilized means that they have a full set of bodily systems that keep the toys alive. Though how well defined these systems are, aren't explained that much in this tape. Playtime Co. is willing to sacrifice other workers to get the experiments back into the factory. As we see in the tape itself, multiple workers died in order to get Huggy back. And while they are trying to keep as many workers as they can in Playtime Co., it's obvious who's more important in Playtime Co.'s eyes. Huggy was able to get out of the factory without anyone noticing until he was outside. Now this is fairly interesting. As the note we see Leif Pierre leaves for security, no one saw Huggy leave the building until it was too late. We know that both the Playtime area, make -a toy room, and the scaffoldings of Poppy's room has cameras there. So unless the cameras were disabled somehow, they shouldn't have missed them. Unless they were disabled. In Log 08502, we hear of an incident where the prototype was able to disable the camera for a short period of time. 
We also hear in final log that the prototype has been missing for a long while. We also know that the prototype is able to control or influence the bigger bodies through some telepathic connection, as seen in both the monster tutorial and this art that shows up during the loading screens in Project Playtime. So, let's imagine that situation. Huggy is staying in the playtime area in his normal pose. The prototype comes into the room, uses the camera's blind spots to then disable it for a while, causing security to briefly lose visual on Huggy. In that time, Huggy takes the chance and makes a run through the factory, through the vents, and finally out the delivery bay door. Now, why did I not say that the prototype forces him to leave? Well, one interesting thing to note is that Huggy doesn't attack the two workers who see him, which, as we see much, much later, wouldn't be too much of an issue. However, once the security team is out to get Huggy, the prototype then tells Huggy to kill anything in sight, leading to the 11 casualties and a deer. Though, once Huggy is there at the building, he doesn't attack any more workers, and is peacefully relocated back to the factory. Now, as to why the prototype does this for Huggy? Well, I personally believe that the prototype does want what's best for the bigger bodies, and that's giving them any chance to fight back against Playtime Co, and give them the chance to see familiar locations again to bring them a bit more peace. Though I can already hear the people in the comments. What about that scene at the end of chapter 2? Yes, I do remember the scene of Mummy running down a long hallway, getting her hand stuck on the grinder, and as she's beginning to get ground up, she yells, What have you done? You make me part of you! You can't do this to me! A lot of people just interpret this as Mummy worrying that she'll be reused by the prototype as parts to complete its unfinished body. Though the way the prototype moves into the room to take Mommy and the fact that it helps the monsters try and fight back against Playtime Co, I don't think the prototype is happy about Mommy being killed. Remember, the crew at Mob Entertainment are full of experienced animators, and one of the main things in animation for characters is the way they move and their body language. The prototype slowly reaching in and slowly pulling her away seems to me that it's, in a way, shocked about what happened to her but griefily pulls her away to, yes, attach to his body, but not to complete himself, but rather to keep as a memento to her. I personally think that the prototype is trying to keep the bigger bodies alive so they can get revenge on every worker in Playtime Co. But he and the other bigger bodies are connected deeply, so when one falls, it's a massive hit. Am I digging too deep into this? Probably. But it's just the way I think of things. And that's all to be said about this tape. So let's insert the next one. The second tape recorded for investigation is of the final incident to happen in the factory before the sudden and abrupt disappearance of his workforce. Within the tape, there are two recordings. One from an entry in a collection of Playtime Co. employee train tapes, and another is the actual incident that took place on that day. The train tape is installment 6, called Bigger Bodies Relocation Guide, which issues a couple steps for the employees to follow up to relocate a bigger body. Step 1. Retrieve Giant from Storage B. Step 2. Safely secure the Giant. The guide then provides a diagram for doing this successfully. Step 3. Load Giant on the train. Step 4. Consult the Bigger Bodies Handbook for contingency plans. Step 5. Inform the conductor of the intended route. Step 6. Keep watch of the Giant during transit. Step 7. Deliver Giant to new location. However, in the middle of the instructional tape, a third party cuts in on steps 4, 6, and 7. All messages from the ordered workers to release the Giant from its binding. In the other recording, the extraction team is sent to retrieve the Giant they were ordered to relocate. Experiment 1. Kissy Missy. They followed the steps listed in the instructional tape and secured the Giant and loaded onto the train. From this point, we can see the record time from the camera. Current time is 10.42 a.m. The recording cuts in and out as the experiments are delivered to its designated location, which in this case is Playcare. A security camera's view is shown during the delivery. The train passes by as the light on the front of it reveals a message on the wall. Upon further inspection, the message says, The hour of joy is at hand. Nothing of note. The train is notably getting speed at an alarming rate. 
The train is at a halt as two playtime co-extraction specialists are seen dead with their blood covering the experiments. The binds holding it down, now gone, and a long scratch is able to be seen at the bottom of the two wooden boards. In the background, the camera hears a massive commotion in the factory. The recording then cuts off, the rest of the footage being missing from it. End of incident. Here's some important things to note from this tape. Who messed with the instructional tape? At the very beginning of the tape, it states that a third party had tampered with the tape, which is obviously the red text we see cover up the normal text. Though, if this was the only time this happened, we wouldn't exactly know who it is. But once again, this isn't the first time this has happened. In Project Playtime Phase 1, the tape, Can You See Us? Can You See This? We see near the end of the tape that someone is contacting the person who is viewing the tape, sending them a gift and promising that the Bigger Bodies initiative will fail. Now in the previous video where I talked about this tape, I never solidly said who I thought this was. But now with this, and with what I said in the previous notes, I definitely think this is the prototype, telling the employees to release Kissy from the binds and let her be free. But obviously, since they didn't do so, they face the consequences. What is the Hour of Joy? This is something we haven't heard of before, but personally, I believe that this is the name that the monster used to call the event we hear in Final Log. With all the bigger bodies go on a rampage throughout the factory, killing all the employees, which is likely what we hear at the end of this tape. This also makes sense with the timing of this tape, as this is so far the latest in the timeline that has a specific date. After this, both Project Playtime and eventually the main game starts, where we see more of these extraction specialists attempt to make more bigger bodies to attempt to bring back Playtime Co., only to fail. What happened to the employees? The extraction specialists were killed while delivering Kissy. However, Kissy is still in the same spot as she was while she was buying down. The only parts that moved were her eyes. However, there are scratches under Kissy on the boards, and the only creature that would make that big enough marks with sharp enough claws would be the prototype, I meaning it's also the one who killed the specialists. Obviously, since the people didn't follow his instructions, he decided to attack the conductor, hence why the train heavily sped up at one point, and then attacked the workers who would attempt to constrain Kissy again. With everything said, we now go into the next tape that gives us greater insight into how the experiments work. The final tape that leaked online is of an instant dubbed Restoration. Within the recording, a Playtime Co. scientist recounts the events that happened that day. Thomas Clark, a longtime worker at Playtime Co., was recently diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. After six months of dealing with this news, Mr. Clark has decided to volunteer to be used to his next experiments. Designated as Experiment 1199, where some of Thomas's organs and consciousness was transferred into a standard brontodice or toy. However, once Thomas came to life in this new body, 1199 couldn't understand what had happened to it, or where it was. Eventually, 1199 was placed into an area where it would interact with the other experiments. However, once it was placed there, the other experiments, Experiment 1, Boxy Boo, and Experiment 1, Kissy Missy, seemingly attacked 1199. As soon as the commotion was heard by the research team, they quickly ran in to save 1199, and they attempted to operate on 1199 to get into stable conditions, taking 12 hours to fully stabilize it. Later, the research team rationalized that the other experiments could tell that 1199 was different. 1199 now sits in a sealed room by itself to make sure it is protected from the other experiments. End of incident. Here are a few important notes to take from this. Employees can volunteer to be experiments. Thomas Clock was a worker at Playtime Co. for almost 40 years. However, once he was diagnosed with lung cancer, he decided to volunteer to become an experiment. Not only saying that people who worked at the company could volunteer and be experiments, but it also seems Thomas thought that being put into a toy would be better than dying to lung cancer, since he would live on as a toy. So they would have to remove his lungs because if they kept them, I think the situation is even worse now and just wouldn't make that much sense. Experimenting on toys have organs that can be damaged. When 1199 was attacked, we get a listing of specific parts of the body missing, showing that these toys have planned out anatomies. Now this isn't much of a surprise given that we see both Huggy, Mommy, and even some of the smaller toys bleed or have blood on them. 
but it's the fact that it's not just flesh or blood, but full systems of the body, and that's interesting to me. We can even see an anatomy sheet of the human body in the background that can help him squeeze it down to a toy. So, that's fun. 1199 has amnesia. In the tape, after Thomas Clark becomes 1199, he doesn't know what happened to him or where he is, implying a large amount of amnesia as he's been a worker for Playtime Co. for decades. But the way the scientist says this sounds like this is the usual thing that happens, or at least it's less than usual in order for it to be noted. So maybe that implies that the other toys remember more of their past, and that's why they slowly grow more and more hatred towards the employees. Food for thought. 1199 was different from the other experiments. This implies quite a bit to the other experiments before this point, as the only thing that could be unique to 1199 that we haven't heard of before in the series is that he was a worker at Playtime Co., implying that the other experiments aren't. So immediately, one of my thoughts in the previous video was that Huggy, Mommy Longlegs, and Boxy all used to be employees now made for a new purpose. However, now, two of those options have been shot down, leaving only Mary Payne as another possible employee at Playtime Co. But I can't really be sure of that when it's likely that 1199 was run off as a failure because of the use of a worker at Playtime Co. But we'll have to wait and see. When did this incident happen? This is the only tape in the collection posted to not have an official date in the title or the video itself, but it's not as ambiguous as it might seem, as we still have the experiment number 1199. Which means that this must take place before Mommy Long Legs is created for the Game Station, as Mommy Long Legs is designated as Experiment 1222. Though we also know that the Game Station had to have some progress done, as we see the Mini Huggies, Bigger Body PJ, along with a smaller PJ, and a Bunzo toy being worked on behind the scientists. So the game station has to be far along enough to have the main attraction being worked on, but be before 1991 as Mommy Longlegs was created as a bigger body first, then created as a toy later. But also after the initial pitch of the bigger bodies initiative as both Boxy Boo, Kissy Missy, and PJ exist as the bigger bodies. So the latest we can play this is the first two months of 1991, with the earliest being the late 1980s. Alright, with those tapes out of the way, let's look at what Project Playtime Phase 2 tells us about Playtime Co. and the bigger bodies initiative. Now, for this section, I won't do the dumb voice as I did previously. As just like the regular tapes from Poppy, there's not much visually to see on the tape in Phase 2, though there are some interesting things to talk about. In this tape, we hear the first successful experiment of the Bigger Buddies initiative. While we only hear its sounds, the only visual we have in this tape is the hand of Boxy Boo. So obviously, much like his Project Playtime description says, he is one of the first monsters created. The doctor is shown Boxy to his delight by another scientist. The doctor shares his compliments by saying that others in the company said it would be impossible, and Boxy defied all odds, proving that the Bigger Bodies initiative was a success. You might want to wait on that, Dr. Sawyer. But continuing, Harley mentions how they need to make Boxy's appetite more tailored to flesh, quickly then referencing the situation with her own soul before they- What is that? Obviously, this phone we hear is important enough to not want to be documented by Dr. Sawyer. Though, what is the phone? Well, our manipulator of analog footage has something to say about it! They once again ask us if we can hear them and see them. Then they welcome us back, mentioning how our gift has arrived and we should see it. And looking beside the monitor, we definitely can. The very phone that was heard in the VHS clip. They tell us they are working to establish a secure line, and once they do, they will call us. They go silent for a few seconds, but then question, why are we still watching? They say that they understand that we all want answers, but then basically say, good things come to those who wait. But then they say, you wonder who we are, but why? You should know, it was your doing that made us. After that bombshell, they then leave again, and the tape ends. Now, before we take notes on what is said in the tapes, I must quickly mention the launch trailer of Project Playtime Phase 2, as it has some dialogue that we don't hear in the actual game. Mortality is the curse of the weak. The fire that incinerates the flesh. I strive to snuff that flame. Call me a monster. But I am simply a man who escaped the incineration and embraced the infinite. While it 
doesn't add that much, it does tell us the alternative goal of the Bigger Boys Initiative, that we could already reliably guess all the way back in Poppy Chapter 1. Phase 2 had a lot in store for gameplay and some small points of lore that was introduced in the tape and trailer, so here are some last important notes to take away from this. Boxy is the first successful bigger body. Okay, now this information was set in his bio in Project Playtime Phase 1, but that gets weird with the Rowan Stoll storyline which I'll talk about in the next point as well. But with the Rowan Stoll storyline, he sees Huggy's eyes moving around, which gets him to warn Leith Pierre that there might be cameras in Huggy's eyes, which would make sense if Huggy was already a bigger body actually looking at the employees. However, with this information we got from this tape, and the acknowledgement of the Rowan Stoll situation, it kind of makes Huggy's eyes moving around weird, since Boxy is claimed to be the true example of the Bigger Body's initiative being a success. Now, there are a couple ways to explain this. Either A, Huggy Wuggy's eyes moving around while someone was looking was deemed as a failure for the Bigger Body's initiative. B, Huggy Wuggy was still in testing while Boxy Boo got out of testing first. C, Huggy at this point was just a statue with cameras in its eyes, and Rowan noticing them was enough for Playtime Co. to put him under questioning and even consider killing him. Or D, this is the first big plot hole or retcon in the Poppy series. Boxy was directly made to eat people. We hear Dr. Sawyer mention how they need to get Boxy's appetite in tune to human flesh. Now in my last video, I did think Boxy Boo was a creature made to keep Playtime Co.'s secrets well, secret, by eating employees who have seen questionable stuff in Playtime Co., though it's interesting that this was the first thing the Doctor wanted. I wonder if that says anything about his motive for doing all of this. Hmm. This tape was recorded while Rowan Stoll was still alive. The Doctor also mentions the Rowan Stoll situation before getting cut off by the phone, which I'll get to in a minute. However, this is interesting because this means that Boxy Boo was created between Tape 2 of the Rowan Stoll ARG and Tape 3, giving us another issue which I'll talk about in the next section, as I think Mob Entertainment accidentally made a massive plot hole or inconsistency. The phone is our gift and is important. The gift the monsters wanted us to receive is the phone, which is extremely interesting. We also hear it in the tape itself, which is treated as secret enough to turn the camera off for. And it's likely that we'll get more reveals as this game continues to be updated, though for now it's just interesting to point out. Our player helped in some way to create the monsters. This is a massive revelation as it reveals the extraction specialist we play as was originally a scientist or in some way made the monsters the way they are now. Though again, since it's currently very vague, there's not much else to say that isn't speculation. The alternative goal of the Bigger Bodies Initiative is to cheat death. In the launch trailer, we hear the Doctor monologue about how mortality is for the weak, and we should accept and embrace the infinity of immortality. In Poppy Chapter 1, we hear Stella Graber wanting to live forever and go back to being a kid. So this isn't entirely new, but this is the first direct confirmation of that idea. So, let's summarize what we have learned in a clickable yet easy to understand way that won't be as confusing as another series, hopefully. A timeline! So first, let's set a start and end to our timeline. Let's set the beginning of the timeline at 1990, as that's literally the latest the Bigger Bodies initiative has to be made before everything we hear about in Project Playtime. Then we have the end of the Project Playtime timeline, which ironically is the base game, where Playtime Co. attempts to keep making more Bigger Bodies, only to fail horribly and just see its operations indefinitely. So now that we have all that set up, let's quickly recap everything and talk about a weird issue that Phase 2 brought up. 1990 to New Year's 1991. Dr. Harley Sawyer offers the idea of the Bigger Bodies initiative to the current heads of Playtime Co., asking to give him the resources to solve all the problems Playtime Co. were currently facing. Later, after the company accepts the initiative, the game station is created as a way to determine which orphan from the play care would work best as a bigger body. 1991. Huggy Wuggy, Kissy Missy, Mommy Longlegs, and PJ are the first couple bigger bodies created. Huh? Where did this all come from? Well, let me explain the issue of Boxy Boo being the first bigger body. In the Phase 2 tape, we hear that Boxy is the first successful bigger body, and he is created in the middle of the Rowan Stoll situation. However, if Boxy Boo was truly the first bigger body at all, Rowan seeing Huggy's eye move doesn't make that much sense, and the whole situation starts after the Mommy Longlegs toy commercial, and we get told by Project Playtime itself that Mommy Longlegs toys were created after her bigger body was a success in the game station. 
We also have PJ getting spotted in March of 1991 by Marcus Brickley. So either this is the biggest plot hole in Poppy's lore currently, or that Huggy, Kissy, Mommy, and PJ were deemed failures to the Bigger Bodies initiative. But for now, I'll take the information we had before and add Boxy's creation after the two of them. So it goes Huggy Wuggy, Kissy Missy, PJ Pugapillar, and then Mommy Longlegs were all created in the first few months of 1991. Mommy Longlegs is a success in the game station and thus has toys made of her before February 1991. Somewhere in 1991, likely before February, the incident with 1199 occurs and from then on experiments with workers are no longer allowed as the other experiments attack the first employee that became an experiment. Then in March, Marcus Brigley seeds PJ Pellicapilla while trying to grab a mop. Later that month, Rowan Stoll warns Leith Pierre of Huggy's eyes looking at patrons. A few months later in May, Rowan Stoll records an update saying he was mistaken and apologizes. At this point, Boxy Boo would start to be created and finished in between this Rowan Stoll recording and the next in July. In between these, we get the VHS Tape 2 of Project Playtime. In July, Rowan makes his last recording, talking about how Playtime Co. is trying to kill him. He plans to reveal all the secrets of Playtime Co. in one week, in which he'll shut down the servers for maintenance and upload them all. He then reveals he's heard rumors of the company having something that eats people. Which, if you'd like me to quickly speculate, I would think that Marcus was also a test to get Boxy's appetite more tuned to flesh. He's talked about something weird happening before Rowan, so it makes sense for him to be eaten by Boxy first. But going back to the timeline, Five days after Rowan's final tape, he stops the service and attempts to upload the files, but is called into the theater area, where he encounters Boxy and is quickly eaten alive. Not much else would happen in the next couple months, at least of what we currently know. June 18th, 1992. Huggy escapes the facility through some means and causes 11 casualties, only to be caught and brought back to the factory after standing still next to a nearby residence. August 8th, 1995. Kissy Missy is attempted to be transported from Storage B to the Play Care, but the train is attacked and Kissy is freed. The Hour of Joy takes place where all the bigger bodies turn on the employees and kills almost all the staff in the factory, leading to Final Log and Poppy Playtime Chapter 1, with all this being caused by the prototype. Late 1995-2000 to 2000. The main events of Project Playtime take place, where teams of extraction specialists are sent in to try and make more bigger bodies, all while the monsters are attempting to stop them. Though at the same time, the monsters are trying to communicate and reason one the few scientists that actually wants to listen to them, that being a scientist in the screening room. They gave them the first and second tape, along with the gift of a phone that they planned to contact them with eventually. But for now, that's the timeline of Project Playtime with the current information we have. I know there's a weird little gray area at both the beginning and end of the timeline, but I hope you guys understand why I put events in specific spots. But that does it for my part 2 explaining what the Bigger Buys initiative is. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as I'll be making more Poppy videos as more content comes out. But if you want to watch more Poppy content from me right now, then check out part 1 right here. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon.